Hey there, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Common Tongue Podcasts. And you may be wondering, is this episode also going to turn out really weird? And you know what? You'd be correct. Uh, I really don't know what's happening. This is what my audio normally sounds like. But for some reason, whenever I use uh, the client that I use to record online, it always just ends up buggy. I run tests, I run pre-recordings, and you know what? I'm just figuring it out. So uh, thank you for your patience. Thank you for your support. Today's episode involves one of my favorite people, Dooley Ray. I met him several years ago when we were working together in Utah, and he's one of the nicest, coolest people I've ever met. So if you're really interested in small-time YouTubing, you're in the right place. So sit back, relax, grab a glass of water, and hopefully you enjoy this episode because we had a lot of fun recording it. And I'm really sorry for the audio again. But once again, here we go. Welcome to another mediocre attempt at what we call a podcast here at the Common Tongue Podcast. Today, we are doing a reshoot because that's apparently that's what we do when we have bad audio. We just we just do new stuff. Please introduce yourself and state what you do for the record. What's up, everybody? My name is Dooley Ray, and I am a uh, small time YouTube creator uh, doing that that YouTube thing, making videos. Love what I do. Uh, it's a good time. Yes. And funny enough, this was this is the second time we're recording this episode. Because the first time we did it was back in September? Was it that long ago? I swear it was like October or something. That's still a long time ago, I guess. <laughs> you know, this whole past year has just been a giant time warp. But I don't. It's whenever not... it was, you came, you came over to my place. And my recording studio is my bedroom, <laughs> and uh, I, I live in a, a house with other people, and there's noise, and that's uh, that's what happened to to last time is bad audio, <laughs> and it was my fault. No, it it honestly wasn't. It was more just the fact that it was just the first time we had been recording, and it was just garbage. Oh, is that what? It, uh, okay. Yeah. So I mean, you can still hear the fans. Oh, oh God. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mr. Dooley Ray. Yeah, yeah. What content do you release? Uh, well, for the most part, it's uh, gaming content. Mm -hmm. uh, for uh, a long time, it was uh, formulated around this specific mobile game. Uh, I, I play on my iPhone, connect it to my computer... I live stream it, make videos out of it. Uh, it's called Marvel Contest of Champions. Uh, it's, it's a game I've played for maybe like five years or so. Oh, gosh. Uh, yeah, it's a long time, and I've put <laughs> money into it, too. <laughs> uh, it's uh, just a, a side hustle, I, I suppose you could call it. A side hustle? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, because I remember, because when we used to work together, that was when I found out that you were a YouTuber. Yeah. But it wasn't until after you had left that I found out about that. Oh, really? I think so, because... No, hold on, wait a minute. I'm trying to... Because this was a long time ago. This was when... <laughs> oh, gosh. This was bef I think this was around the same time that I started management. And you no were thinking about leaving. No way. So... Uh... I, that was a long time ago. I, I really yeah. can't remember. I just, I didn't tell a lot of people in general. Uh, yeah, because I remember it. you took that snowboarding trip with a group of friends, and they they were super excited because they were saying that they were going to be in a YouTube video with you. Yeah. You, I think that was when the first time I found out about it was. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, it was that long ago, however long ago that was. That was a couple of years, at least, I'd say. But <laughs> Gosh, it's been so long. Yeah, normally I, I don't like to tell people about my YouTube channel, uh, just because it's not so much that I'm embarrassed by it, but I just like the idea of having a secret identity online. It makes me feel like a superhero, you know? Like, uh, on the internet, I, I get to be Superman, I get 
to talk to like thousands of people. It was awesome. And then the next day I get to put on normal clothes, go outside, and nobody even knows who I am. I'm Clark Kent. See, you should have been a faceless YouTuber. You should have been one of those guys who just puts on a metal helmet. I've thought about that, but it's it's kind of too late. <laughs> <laughs> it's about three years too late. I can't do a face unreveal, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, you could. You'd be the first person to do it. True. Oh, video idea. Thank you. There you go. Yeah, everybody. This is now my new face. <laughs> Take what you see here. Now forget it. <laughs> Okay, so let's let's get into a little bit of the meat and potatoes. Um, when when did you? So you started five years ago. That's right. What was the main reason you started being in the YouTubes? Uh, I mean, honestly, it's something that I've always wanted to do. Uh, I just there's something about being on camera that I love, and making videos, editing the whole uh, creative process. I just I really enjoy that. Mm -hmm. And so from middle school on, I, I always wanted to yeah, be making videos. Um, I have, I have other YouTube channels that I've made in the past that uh, shall remain nameless, but I still keep up just for the, the kicks and giggles. I go oh, back. So there's, wait, they're still up. Yeah, they're still up, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna show it oh. to anybody. And there's no way you're going to find it. There's like, they, they have under a hundred views under 10 subscribers that type of thing so it's it's internet gold basically going back and looking at it but it's not something that i want to to look back on so uh, if i'm understanding this correctly you have okay how many subscribers do you have as of today do you know do you know off the top of your head uh it's over 9100 currently okay how many of them would you say are active viewers of your videos? Uh, hard to say. Uh, it depends. I'd say over a thousand. I can kind of depend on pretty regularly to, to watch my stuff. Okay. So that means that if a thousand of your fans are watching or are not watching, we can't watch voices. If a thousand of your fans are listening to this, that means the odds of us finding those channels go up exponentially. Yeah, but it's not going to happen. There's no way. There's just no way. <laughs> I think I think he's issuing a challenge. I think Dooley Ray is issuing a challenge to me and to his fan base that we need to find these channels now. Uh, and if I we do, it. is there like a secret, the super secret, I don't know, hide-and-go-seek surprise? I, I would be majorly surprised. Uh, You'll do an unface reveal? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I would have to. <laughs> oh, okay, so you have, as you mentioned, you have around 9.1 thousand. Yes, that's, just, that's correct, yes. Does that number frighten you? Uh, no. That, that many people are interested in the content that you make? Not not necessarily. Uh, I do, I guess, there is a pressure for me to make a certain type of video. And I think especially in this past year, I've, I've dealt with trying to get out of that. Uh, mm -hmm. Just because people will subscribe to the channel, they'll watch my videos for uh, particular content. And that just, it makes me feel like I don't have options i can't i can't do creative stuff and so even if it's not something that my audience would necessarily want to see if it's something that i want to make i still want to do it so i don't know that i'm necessarily the greatest example of a, a good youtuber because there is a way to play the game and there's it's it's not all luck you can uh work uh, around uh how do i put it? it it's kind of a snowball effect you know where right. it starts out yeah. small and if you build up a little bit of momentum, then that turns into bigger momentum. And then it just keeps on going from there and there. And I, I kind of, I, I take that snowball and while it's rolling, I, I kick it <laughs> just, <laughs> just to watch it explode. And so it's, it's a little self-destructive, but I don't want to be the type of person that just has to do the same thing again and again. I don't want to be a circus animal trapped in 
cage. People just point at me and expect me to do one thing, uh, if dance that makes sense. Dance monkey man yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I, I, my dream is to make it big on YouTube, to have it be a full-time gig. I don't need to be the most successful person in the world, but if it could be a full-time thing, that would be awesome. But the the way that I play it, I don't know that that's, that's in the books. Right. And is it, would you say that it's more difficult to do that because you started out as a niche performer and then just stayed there instead of branching out earlier on? Uh, it's, it's possible. Uh, maybe I branched out too soon and I didn't get niche down enough. <laughs> that mm. possibility. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely certain. And maybe, maybe if I kept pushing just a little bit more then I'd, I'd hit it, but I, I can't know for sure, and so it's just right. you take it day by day. Oh, I don't know, because it's just, the when I think about it, you think of all those big gaming YouTube channels, yeah. and I guess I guess you're right. For, for several years, they stuck with one particular genre uh-huh. and then decided, hey, I want to do something different now that I have enough momentum to do that. Yeah, well, oh, dude, the fascinating thing is if you go back and look at how YouTube has changed, uh, when I was getting into it, I think one of my favorite creators was uh, Tobuscus. Do you know Tobuscus? I remember Tobuscus. I loved Tobuscus so dude. much. Yeah, me too. Uh, he was a pretty huge influence for me, actually. Really? Uh, just Yeah, he, he's kind of got like a wacky, zany sense of humor. It's a little bit childish now looking back on it, but uh, at the time it was... I I loved it, and he was super creative. He he made animations, he made music, uh, he did all kinds of stuff, and I thought that was really cool. Uh, and then YouTube kind of shifted towards gaming uh, from there because it used to just be you know one viral video, uh, then another viral video. Uh, it used to be specific videos like uh, Gangnam Style. What does the fox say? Uh, Oh, those are... old old viral videos you know and yeah. then it changed it became gaming content uh, and that became the thing and i i got into that too and then gaming content kind of shifted i don't know if people got bored or what but now it's it's more commentary based everything is is commentary even the gaming channels if you look at uh famous channels like markiplier uh, he still does a lot of gaming i guess but uh, maybe more pewdiepie or jacksepticeye that type of thing they right. kind of they've shifted to commentary over gaming and i feel like youtube has kind of followed that as well so the the question i have is is where do we go next and how do i get in front (laughs) of that that's i you know question the way that i see it happening is is it it's more variety channels now you have to become a variety channel you can't just stick to one particular thing anymore i mean you can but it has to be sparsed out yeah the way i understand the algorithm is not at all (laughs) so what i see happening is the people who are more successful on youtube are the people who are either twitch streamers now and putting up their their vods onto youtube Mm -hmm. or people who do a multitude of different things yeah that caters to a lot of different genres yeah, I think there's a lot of truth to that. And just in general, YouTube is, has grown so massively to the point where if you want to find something, if you want to find a community, there's going to be a place for it. And, right. you know, if, if you get into it, then that's what YouTube looks like to you. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, it can be it can be different for, for lots of people just based on your preferences. Um, right. Specifically with Contest of Champions, how big is that, I guess, that that grouping? Is it particularly big, or is it more of those underdog things? Uh, it's a, a, it's relatively unknown. I, I can't say that for sure, but <laughs> the, the largest channel that I know of that, that creates the type of content that I do um, has 250,000 subscribers and or maybe more than that at this point maybe 280,000 so i kind of view that as the current cap for how many people are are watching that type of content on youtube right. cuz everybody else below that is is anywhere between like 100 to 
a thousand subscribers or even, you know, there's a lot of channels out there with under a thousand subscribers uh, trying to, to get into the community as well. Mm -hmm. Would you say you're about middle of the road then, or are you, are you more upper echelon? I'm definitely not upper echelon, uh, a little more small time. I, I think there's a, there's probably like 10,000 people in the community who, if you said duly raid, they would know the name and <laughs> they, they would have things to say about me. Uh, but I don't know what, what those things would necessarily be. Uh, hopefully good. Hopefully. I mean, that's what, that's the only thing that any creator can ask for is that somebody says their content is good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the cool thing the the other youtubers uh in in the community uh i i would say they all know me <laughs> the ones that i know <laughs> the ones that i know know me so you know the guy with three hundred thousand subscribers he he knows me and you know we've chatted uh, a couple times and oh uh, yeah so there's a good uh, community here see i think i like that i think i would prefer a smaller close knit community rather than one that is wildly popular. And then you get just, you're like a needle in a haystack. You get forgotten about. Yeah. You, oh yeah. my gosh. You get forgotten. <laughs> I can't. Hi, my name's uh, Nick. I clearly can't speak English anymore. So I got a degree in linguistics and I forget in everything <laughs> that I learned. Yeah. It's, it's all the Kyrgyz man. That's all it was. <laughs> I spent four months studying that language and now English is just on the back burner now. Uh, it happens you know i believe it that's uh <laughs> i don't know any other languages i took lots of classes and i don't i don't remember a lot so good on there you go. for knowing other languages <laughs> good job so here's here's one thing that i've always now that i okay i'll put it to you this way i've known you for about five years now and in that time I have known that you are a gamer and I have known that you are into superheroes and I have known that you like that genre, that superhero genre, specifically Batman, right? It was Batman that I was obsessed with. For or, a bit. No, no, it's, it's Flash. Flash is my favorite superhero, technically. I, it's it, it's hard to say. I don't know. I just like Wait, the so idea it of superheroes. It's nobody in particular now. I, oh. I still like the Flash, but it's not. I feel a little childish saying oh this is my favorite superhero uh, <laughs> dude mine is mine's spider-man all the way all day sure fair 100%. enough fair play but i don't know i i, I personally see no problem in telling people especially people like us right not necessarily we're, we're man childs that's exactly we're man children that's sure. that's exactly what i am i'm a big old yes. man child i still play video games i still play with pieces of cardboard around with my friends <laughs> and i make content on the internet so what are you gonna do about it yeah <laughs> no but the the main reason why i i bring this up is because do you feel like if you wanted to you have enough source material to branch out into other things say for example either comic book reviews or superhero reviews or anything like that uh, yeah, I mean, I, I could branch out into that if I wanted to. It would probably have to be Marvel related over over anything, but I don't know that I'm necessarily interested in doing that. Uh, and that's for what reasons? I just um, I oh, how do I put this? Is it just uh, not interesting? Yeah, uh, there's really two types of content that I see people make on YouTube uh, that I, I kind of put into categories. So there's educational content and there's uh, entertainment content. Mm -hmm. And I want to create in the entertainment content side of things. And I feel like uh, a lot of what that would be would be on the educational side of things where I'm trying to, to teach people. I'm trying to be uh, a source of information on superheroes and whatnot and i'm really i'm just not super interested in that okay then in that same vein if you were to do that kind of content either with something to do with either marvel comics or marvel movies or anything like that what would that content look like to you where it's still entertainment but still has that value of i guess sharing your opinion on that subject and informing people about it 
Uh, what would that perfect blend look like? What would that blend look like? Well, that's kind of the the secret recipe, huh? That's the I, I know and that's my success. Yeah. Picking my brain here. <laughs> uh, what would that look like? I really I don't know. Uh, I've tried movie reviews before. <laughs> uh, Was that one of those dead channels? Yeah, dude. <laughs> just didn't just didn't work for me. I'm I I don't feel like. I'm a good source of information. Maybe it's uh, just me putting myself down, but I uh, I just feel like there's other people who are way better, who are going to do more research and, and who know way more than me, uh, uh-huh. who, who just are going to do it better in general. So I just, I'm not interested in competing in that. Okay. In terms of, oh, hi, geez. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well then. Um, so I guess gave me flashbacks. (laughs) That's my alarm every morning. (laughs) Oh no, I don't want to wake up. No, please. Five more minutes. That's my walking dog alarm. Okay. Yeah. We take him, we try and take him for three walks a day, but oh my gosh, (laughs) Uh, that's how late it is. Anyway. So I guess if you were to move forward, uh, away from, the gaming content that you normally produce. Yeah. What would it be? Uh, it would be a lot more meme I think. If, uh, okay. To kind of explain it. It would just be more random, just uh, content that I find funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I kind of want to collaborate with other people more on what I do, uh, just because alone I don't think I'm funny enough to to keep people's (laughs) attention Uh, as bad as that sounds i mean i i have analytics i have statistics that you (laughs) i can look at and i'll be like oh man this joke really didn't hit (laughs) i'm not as funny as i thought i was clicked away from that one yeah 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 like uh i'll be i'll I'll show something and then i'll cut back to my face and the viewership just drops and i'm like (laughs) i got something in my teeth what's going on here man (laughs) Yeah, so okay. if I had other people to to bounce off of, or if I could find somebody who was just this diamond in the rough, hilarious person, uh, hey. Hey, yeah, that's could. that's what I'm looking for is, is <laughs> something something to give me that kind of boost. Okay, I've seen your videos on YouTube. I I subscribe. I watch your videos whenever they come out. Oh, thanks. I would you like some advice that I have seen? Yeah, dude, anything. Okay, I feel, and this is coming from the best of places, I love you, you are a great human. Tell me the truth. Hit me with it. I feel like you're uninterested in what you're doing. Yes. No matter what it is. You can, really, yes. anything. And it's because of your voice. Really? Yeah, when you're just like, oh, oh no, oh, what am I doing? It's <laughs> it's that kind of voice where it's just like you're unsure of what it is, so you just seem uninterested in it. Really? Yeah. Talking like this, uh-huh. I can I can genuinely tell you're interested in the conversation. There's good topic points to bring up. You're genuinely thinking about what you're saying, and you're and you're interested in the conversation. Uh-huh. I feel like whenever you're whenever you think you're trying to be funny, or whenever you think you're honestly creating something that's funny ish. Uh huh. You feel like it's not, and so your voice emulates that. Oh, weird. Okay. Yeah, that's probably something that I do like subconsciously. I don't. I'm gonna have to. No, like watch your videos back. Watch, especially. Um. Uh. I'll I'll give you an example. The one where you did the push-ups. Uh huh. At the very beginning of the of the video, it kind of feels like that. But then towards the end where you're just tired and exhausted, that's where I can hear your voice be like, okay, I'm just, I'm tired. I'm done. I'm just going to say something to be <laughs> funny and yeah. hope that it comes out good. Wow. Okay. <laughs> good to know. Okay. But that's just, again, that's just what I've seen. But- no, I've, I, like, I, I'm thinking back on it and I do, I put on a voice. I have a YouTube voice. Yeah, uh, that's that's different from my normal voice because I I try to bump up my energy levels for making videos. Um, I think people can tell the difference between forced energy and legitimate energy. True. Yeah, I. Hmm. 
Yeah, dude. <laughs> or at least I can tell. There, there are certain creators that I see, I can tell when they're forcing content and when they're being genuine. Or at least yeah. I like to think I know. Yeah. You watch it for long enough and then you recognize, oh, this guy must be tired. He must not be into it as much. So. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe even if they can't say it out loud, I think it's something that a lot of people could maybe pick up on subconsciously. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the type of thing that... Uh, Wow. Okay. Thank you. No, <laughs> I'm gonna just... I'm gonna take that and and run with it. I think, and we'll we'll see. So, like right now, my voice it sounds normal to you. Yeah, this is this is your normal voice, and I like this voice. And then, so give everybody an example of your YouTube voice. So just do your intro and like. Uh... <clears throat> How's it going, everybody? I'm your friendly neighborhood Dooley Ray, and today we're gonna be looking at what uh, is inside of this box. I just there's nothing inside the box. I just it's, it's just an empty box. It's just an empty box. Yeah, so something like that. I you know did you notice the energy? See, I go see. Up then and... I didn't because I think it was more off the cuff. So I that again that felt genuine. But I think when you think out the content, you think it out too much. Oh no. Okay, this is gonna take some work. You just gotta pull it out your butt, man. Yeah, I don't just, know. Just okay. verbal, just garbage, just. <laughs> spew it for it make it so yeah manifest it into the ether yeah because i mean uh, naturally uh, i'm, I'm kind of the opposite of the way that i act on youtube uh, yeah no that's true i i will i will agree with that yeah because i'm a i'm an introverted person in general but you know underneath that there's a like extra it's not extroverted but just it's not it's kind of hyper uh I, I describe it because I'm the same way. I like being at home more than I enjoy being outside. Yeah. And, but I will admit there are times where I am social. So I like to say I'm a social introvert. Yeah. Well, I, I would definitely say uh, you're more social than me. Uh, You'd be surprised. I spent uh, – so I took a break over Christmas. Uh-huh. And I was totally fine with doing nothing every day. Uh-huh. But when I go out, I make an effort to be sociable because that's that's how my uh, – specifically my dad taught me to be. My dad can talk to anybody. Mm. He can be in line in Walmart and start a conversation with anyone. Yeah. And so I got that from him. So I, I try and emulate both. I like being home playing Stardew Valley for hours on end. <laughs> but if I'm outside, I can talk to people. I have no problem with it. Oh, okay. Yeah, for me, I am fine to be alone. Uh, you know, I don't mind being home. I can do my own work. I can I can live in my head, and I, I really don't mind that too much. Uh, but then I go out, and if I don't know a person, I'm really not going to talk to them. To Right. Yeah, but uh, you put me in front of a camera, and you post a video on the internet to thousands of people, and I'm totally fine with it. So. <laughs> That's the that's the contradiction. I'll give you this because I'm the type of person where I can't force emotion, right? I I can't do it. If I if you want me to smile in a in a picture, you have to force me to do it with a joke. You have to say something funny or else I can't force it. I yeah. I hate that feeling. Yeah. And so I'm the same way when I record content that's scripted. Uh-huh. So, for example, I just did an ad read for uh, one of my partnerships, which is Elixir Labs, right? Mm -hmm. And I, when I listened to it initially the first time, you can tell that it's monotone, it's dead. Even though I'm adding inflection, you can tell that there's just something to it that's just, ugh, it's gross. Yeah. But once I start knowing the lines and once I can start adding myself into it, so if you listen back on the episode that I just released with uh, Sophia Senderak, mm -hmm. you can hear it in there. And that's the final product where I was like, okay, this sounds genuine enough to where I can release it and I'm okay with it. Yeah. Okay. And that's my process. I try and, I try and put as much of my emotion as I can after it's been scripted, after I know it well enough to where I can just be like, oh, hi, this is Nick. My name is Nick. This is where my emotion comes out. Yeah. Okay. So I guess I don't know if that's the same as trying to force me to smile, but it's just like I can't force emotion. 
So I have to feel comfortable with it before I can show emotion. So you wouldn't you wouldn't be a good actor. No, absolutely. Well, eh, no, I don't think so. I think I'd make a horrible actor. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Uh, hmm. I don't know. Are you easier with scripted or are you easier with off the cuff? Uh, I would say you know, even if there's not a physical script, a lot of the time the things that I say, I'm I'm scripting out in my head before I say it in a weird way. Really? Yeah. Uh, a lot of the things I say, I, I really think about before I say them. In terms of content online or just in general? Oh, that's just me in general. So that goes for when I'm when I'm talking to people and, and mm-hmm. when I'm making content online too. I'm uh, always thinking about what I'm going to say and what the response may be and what my response would be to that, you know, that type of thing. So with that, do you find yourself biting your tongue more often than not? Or because you're scripting it out, you find that you have a pretty good balance of, of what you want to say? No, I bite my tongue a lot <laughs> because <laughs> things never go according to plan. Uh, yeah, so that's 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 kind of the way that it works. I don't know. It's a lot easier when I'm recording because I can have a full script in my head and there's no person responding to me necessarily. That's fair. So I can just run through the whole thing. But when it's when it's actual conversation, uh, it's a bit harder. I can understand that. I can I can feel that. Hey everyone, I wanted to take a minute and thank today's sponsor, Elixir Labs. They've got this crazy new form of an energy booster called Elixir, which is a super cool name in my opinion. Elixir is made of their own proprietary energy formula and a blend of smart drugs called nootropics. This stack of nootropics helps give you a clean energy boost without the side effects of a crash. With natural ingredients like 5-HTP, L-theanine, and Bacopa monieri, these things help boost focus, mood, memory, and other cognitive functions. And to be honest, this is probably unlike any other energy drink you've tried. To top it all off, Elixir tastes amazing. It smells and tastes like the best blue popsicle you've ever had. And to me, that is personally the best part. But don't just take my word for it. If you'd like to kill two birds with one stone and try Elixir while supporting the show, use a link in the description of this episode and try Elixir today. Similarly, but kind of not, I'm in the vein where I can script out the worst possible scenario to happen. Yeah. But then I will immediately dial it back about 50% and then say, <laughs> this is most likely what's going to happen. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I, I like to describe it as pessimistic realism, where I imagine the worst possible outcome and then dial it back to a realistic degree. Okay, interesting. How would I describe myself? I I have always said that I'm kind of a uh, pessimistic optimist. <laughs> yeah, just in, like a general way? contradiction. So I, deep down... I, I hope for the best and, and I expect the, the best, but I push that down and try to keep it more realistic. I don't know if that's uh, the proper way to describe it, but something along. The I, I think I would call that more optimistic realism. Yeah. Yeah. Where you, where you hope for the best, but you expect reality to kick in. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, because my opposite end is where I expect the worst, but then dial it back in to a realistic degree. Uh huh. I think I I do the same thing. I, I uh... well, so but here's the thing: deep down, you expect the best. Deep down, I expect the worst. Maybe I don't know. I'm a, a very anxious person, so I kind of expect the worst too. But I hope for the best. I expect the worst. I hope for the best, and then I meet in the middle. <laughs> that's 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 what the way I mean. the way i like to describe it is that i'm either pleasantly surprised or i'm always right okay yeah because i'm so i guess doomsday in my head mm-hmm. so i'm either like oh this wasn't as bad as i thought it was gonna be okay yeah. I'll, I'll give you i'll give you a real world example of this okay mm. so when i got home from my mission i started working for aeropostale Sorry, Aeropostal, as they as they tell you to say it. Um, and, and they're trying to be the high line. 
you're talking about sure. the clothing, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Aeropostale, the, the clothing line. Uh-huh. And so two months in, or maybe not even, like maybe a month in, the district manager comes in. He's like, Nick, I need to have a conversation with you. And immediately, immediately, I start going, okay, I swear I haven't done anything wrong in the last two <laughs> weeks. I have been on time. I haven't taken uh, too long of a break. I've been on, I, you know, if there has been a problem, I've talked to somebody about it. I, I don't know what I've done. I have no idea what I've done. That was my immediate thought process. Mm-hmm. He goes out and he says, hey, look, I, I, I don't. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, we need you to become management. You're like, oh. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's a lot better than what I thought was going to happen. So, yeah, cool. I'll take that. Yeah, okay. So that's that's my thought process, usually. That's why whenever my wife says, hey, can I talk to you about something real quick? I immediately go to the worst possible thing. I think most like, guys. Okay, what have I done? What most have guys I done? Do that. Yeah. It's my wife. But yeah. that's the thing. It's my wife now. Well, my wife did that a week scary. ago and i was just like oh god what have i done did i not do the laundry did i did i forget to do the dishes did did my dog poop on the carpet like what happened <laughs> nah girls so are, i still do it like no matter what girls are scary just in general oh my wife is my wife is psycho <laughs> especially good thing, when she, good she doesn't uh, good thing she doesn't listen to your podcast huh oh her whole family listens oh <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it. <laughs> no, but my wife knows that I think that about her. She loves it. She thinks it's funny. Because I'm just as crazy as she is. Ah, so you're two psychos. Yeah, we're like... I like to think of it as that I'm... I'm chaotic neutral, and she's lawful neutral. Okay, so you balance each other out in a way. Yeah. It's hilarious. If you were just to watch a conversation between the two of us at 1030 at night when she's ridiculously tired and I'm just trying to find something to entertain me till I can pass out, it's hilarious. Dude, you live in Washington, right? I live in Oregon. Dude, I don't know. I'm kind of I don't I don't know where I'm going to go. Like looking at the future, there's so many options and I just keep on staying in the same place. So it makes you question. Like, are you gonna go anywhere? Are you just gonna, you just gonna be in the same place forever? And that's the question: Would you take your? I mean, obviously you would because you want to make it a a full time thing. But do you think your content would change with location? No, I don't think so. Because with my community, we're spread out like all across the U.S. and England, and (laughs) a lot of people in India too. Uh, So it's not really centrally located if i was more in the general youtube scene maybe moving to like la or something Mm -hmm. would be beneficial but that just kind of goes for any kind of movie or tv internet type of thing social media right everybody lives in la and i'm just not i'm not huge on on moving there i don't know well and what i mean by that more than anything is that so would you move to a place where there are more people who play the game that you do? And would that affect any decision that you made? No, I don't, I don't think so. Um, I had a really cool experience though, because I went to New York comic con in, I remember when you went, I remember that. That was in like 2018 or so. Mm -hmm. And that was super cool because we we gathered everybody together uh, and we just, sat around at the contest of champions booth that was at the the convention and it was i just i I don't even know how to describe the experience it was so awesome i signed autographs for a couple of people that made you actually i did that's the Uh, coolest thing ever it made me feel really cool i haven't worked on a signature at all though so i just kind of made it up how you sign your checks yeah, but I I'd never like not signed my name before. I had to sign as Dulyere, and that was weird. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so everybody there, nobody knew my real name. Everybody just called me Dooley the the whole time I was there, and that was an interest. It was like I was a different person, and that was interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a little secret right now, just because I think it's absolutely hilarious. Yeah. My eighth grade. English teacher. His last name was his last name was Dooley. Really? So we called him Mr. Dooley. 
hey, <laughs> I need to hit him up then and sue him wanna... for stealing my name. <laughs> Do you want to know what his nickname was uh, senior year uh, when I was graduating? Uh, oh, this doesn't we, sound good. We called him Duels. Duels? Yeah. What's Miss up, Duels? Hey. No, we didn't even call him Mr. He was like, what's up, Duels? <laughs> I don't think that's so bad. That's a, a good name. Yeah, Better so than... I think... I think that's what we need to. I think we need to start calling you duels because I think duels is really cool. It's the the new age. Dually, that's twenty twenty one dually. <laughs> Dude, that's so twenty twenty. <laughs> uh, but yeah, surprisingly though, we did that to a lot of teachers mm-hmm. in high school, especially the males. Mm-hmm. Uh, so one of the one of my professors, we or one of my professors, one of the teachers, we called him Shrive Dog. <laughs> Dude, what school did you go to? What the heck? <laughs> this is in Tennessee. Nice. Uh, it sounds yeah, like you're pretty dude. tight. Oh, dude, Shrive Dog was the coolest. He had a he had a poster of a guy in like like a Rat Pack suit with like with the big fedora, like the wide brim fedora and the sh- and the shoes and stuff. Uh huh. Kind of like a mobster, and it said "Original Gangster." <laughs> Wow, that's pretty cool. I had a teacher in middle school. He had a bunch of superhero posters, so he was like the coolest guy ever. Um, he was uh, Mr. Lakes, and he had a son at the same school, and we called his son Mr. Puddles. That's just that's that's a total aside. You guys aren't funny. That's <laughs> funny, but I want you to know that that's not funny. <laughs> Uh, it was pretty funny. I, yeah. This is the episode of Paradoxes where that's funny, but it equally it's not funny. <laughs> We're both introverted and extroverted. What do you want from us? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I need sleep. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. So, moving forward, hmm. Let's let's think about this for a minute, Dooley. Who would be one person that you would love to collab with? Tobuscus. <laughs> even now? Even after everything that he's gone through? Yeah, sure, why not? Seriously? Yeah, dude, he's like, he's he's kind of faded, but he still makes videos from time to time. No, I know that, but it's just, I feel, I, you know, I heard a lot of rumors about Tobuscus, uh-huh. and I have no idea who to believe or what to believe with anything. Yeah. Well, I know there's like allegations and stuff that happened, but nothing was ever really proven, and so it just uh, sort of dissolved. And if there was anybody, I feel like he personally came out worse for it, though. Oh yeah, he definitely got the shaft on on what happened. Uh, well, not even with that, but just like in terms of of his content. Oh, what do you mean? Because I, I so okay, I started watching some of his content again after about. Let's see. I think two years ago, I started watching some of his most recent content, uh-huh. and I just don't like it. No, no, I don't. I don't know if he's done anything on his gaming channel or anything else, but it's just I just I'm I don't find I'm I'm not entertained anymore. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I I haven't really watched any of his videos in a in a very long time. But if it just if you're gonna ask me if if I could collaborate with anybody, oh, with, um, okay, YouTube anybody and, and in the, who. Okay who i'm gonna collab with i would you know maybe maybe prime tobuscus not okay prime Prime tobuscus Tobuscus. not current tobuscus but prime tobuscus yeah okay and not that and it's not that i'm trying to hate on him it's just i don't i don't know what he's trying to portray anymore Mm -hmm. if if that makes sense because old school tobuscus i knew exactly who he was i knew exactly what he was about and nowadays i just don't know anymore so it just it confuses me and i just I don't find interest in it. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be uh him, maybe you know, PewDiePie would always be a cool collaboration, but that's uh that's that's asking. Do you want my honest lot. opinion on PewDiePie? Uh oh. It's the same thing with Tabuscus. I don't I don't know who he is anymore. I don't find a lot of his content entertaining anymore. Really? Yeah. I, I'm still subscribed and I still watch some of the stuff that he does, but it's just I don't know who he is anymore, so I'm just a lot of the times I'm just uninterested in what he does. Ooh. That's I'm I'm kind of the opposite maybe where I feel like 
I know him way better now because he's a lot more upfront and, and honest than he was before. So I, I don't know when you subscribed to him or watched him, but you know, back oh, when like making, almost, yeah, like amnesia clips. Yeah. So when he was making gaming content, I really didn't watch or, or like him all that much. Um, but then after he changed, he went through a weird phase. And then after he changed, <laughs> uh, I, I subscribed, got more interested. Yeah. You know? I mean, okay. Don't get me wrong. I still watch a lot of his content. I like his, his meme review. I like a lot of his, his YouTube stuff uh-huh. or his YouTube stuff, his Minecraft and, and that kind of <laughs> content. Yeah. But honestly, I just, I, I feel, I don't know the best way to say it. It's just, it feels different but not in a good way like i'll give you an example my the two peaks that what i consider content going in one of two ways is jacksepticeye and pewdiepie Uh pewdiepie is the one where he's still making good content but i just don't know what he's about anymore yeah and the other is jacksepticeye where he's making different content and i know exactly what he's about and i love it Hmm. Okay. That's 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 the way I separate it. I separate it. Are you a PewDiePie or are you a Jacksepticeye? And, okay. And then you have varying tiers in that, I guess, in that grouping. Sure, sure. Tobuscus would probably fall under PewDiePie. Mm-hmm. And uh, Crank Gameplays, Ethan Nestor, mm-hmm. he falls under a Jacksepticeye. Okay. That's how. That's the way I group those. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can. I can see it. I, I don't know that I feel the same way about PewDiePie as you do, but I can I can see where you're coming from with that. Don't get me wrong. He's made a lot of great content over the years. It's just that now I just, I don't know, I find myself moving away from his content. Yeah, well, I think that's just kind of the natural order of things on YouTube <laughs> is uh, relevance, irrele- irrelevance. Yeah, relevance and irrelevance. Yeah, and can... lots of elephants. <laughs> Relevance, irrelevance, and lots of elephants. That's what this episode is going to be called. <laughs> uh, Honestly, you want to know what content I've been strangely been getting into a lot lately? Huh. Pokemon card openings. Dude, yeah, that's Pokemon and a Magic big thing. Yeah, a lot of people I... are, are getting into that, and I don't know that I understand it, but I I don't mind it either. So I love it. I love it so much. Um, Aaron Aaron Hansen from Game Grumps. Uh huh. He started a brand new channel called Shuffle Master, and that's all he does. Is just open up Pokemon cards? Yeah, on stream. He does it live. That's awesome. <laughs> and then the other one that I've been watching a lot is uh, uh, Leonhart. I don't know if you've ever seen I... any of his content. I haven't. Have you ever watched uh, Moist Critical? Yeah, I watched some of his stuff too. I know he's done some openings. Yeah, I, he's he's probably the main one that I've seen open up cards. He's pretty yeah. fun to watch. <laughs> and then Crank Gameplay has been doing it too recently. Him, Leonhart, and Game Grumps, or not Game Grumps, Shuffle Master, Aaron Hansen, they've kind of created like a weird trifecta, uh-huh. I feel like. And I love it. I'm loving every minute of it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know when things turn that way, but it's interesting to watch. It's been there for, it's been there, uh, excuse me. I feel like it's been there for a minute. I just feel like now is when it's finally starting to gain popularity. Yeah, I, I guess, I guess so. I wonder how it started though, because there's always, there's always a kick to it. You know, a popular creator picks it up and then it becomes a trend. And I don't mm-hmm. know, I don't know who started it. Maybe it was Moist. I don't know, I don't know if Moist Critical has been doing pokemon card openings but i know he's been doing openings for a minute yeah yeah it may have been he was the first one that i saw doing it but i don't want to give him credit for it if if it's not him who started it but uh, if you know if you listening know who started the whole tcg opening thing trend let us know please send us an email at tctpodcast at gmail.com it is very important we must know or on duly ray's next video yes post a comment (laughs) yeah Yeah, i don't know i i it's weird seeing it's weird trying to figure out where the future of online entertainment is gonna go yeah well and it's interesting to watch too it's uh there's something about history i never really liked history class in school but 
uh, looking back on how things change over time is there's there's something that's kind of fascinating about that and the internet just uh, gives it a huge boost and oh absolutely it changes absolutely way faster so we're just we're on a high speed train to who knows where we just uh, we're along for the ride here's an interesting question just because i know you started school uh in the cinematography program right yeah so here's i think a very decisive question that i want to ask you in terms of media and how it looks going forward mm -hmm. uh i think warner brothers said that they were going to release a lot of their content uh their movies online for 2021 yeah, yeah. was it warner brothers uh it's like warner brothers hbo max yeah, I think yeah. I think that's I think Warner Brothers said that they were going to start releasing a lot of their. Let's find out. Let me find out real quick. We're going to do a common tongue fact check. This is we did this in the first episode. We're going to do it in the in the latest episode. Didn't we name we named a guy <laughs> to go look at the oh, we did. Oh like, no, Alfredo or something. I don't remember. Let's not bring that up. <laughs> Alfredo, we need the facts. Oh no. <laughs> I can't remember what it was. It was pretty funny at the time. <laughs> oh gosh. Um let's see here. I don't know the best place to look at this. 20 Oh wait, 2021 movies on HBO. Wonder Woman came out. That was I heard a lot of people Yeah, it is Warner Brothers. Okay, it is Warner Brothers. I heard a lot of people were actually very annoyed and upset about Wonder Woman what part <laughs> just the movie in general i haven't uh, seen it so i don't know what they're talking about but this movie is annoying it's just i know people were disappointed in it yeah but what did what did they expect i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i would hate to be the bearer of bad news but so far dc has not had a good track record and so my expectations are really low so wonder woman for me you know it, just, it wasn't part for the, the course it was part for the course it wasn't the best movie ever it's not the worst movie ever it's not suicide squad so I'm, suicide I'm okay. squad was so good I loved good it was good i liked it dude i walked out of the theater so mad i I'd never seen a worse movie in my life and then I don't know if that was before or after the Fantastic Four movie, but that was that was worse. And... Oh, I didn't even bother watching the Fantastic Four. I was the minute I saw the trailer, I said this is not going to end well. That was a smart play. Marvel's actually picking up the Fantastic Four, and I'm excited to see that. I am so excited to see that. I think they can do it. You want to know what I'm actually really excited to see? What's that? And then we'll go into the original question that we were asking, and then got tangentially distracted on. Um, <laughs> I'm really excited to see uh, the next Doctor Strange movie. Yeah, it's directed by Sam Raimi, isn't it? I don't remember. He's but... the guy that made all the Spider-Man movies, and he's got kind of a horror background. So it's going to be different from a lot of uh, the Marvel movies that have come out so far, I think. Right, and that's that's honestly why I'm interested to see it. Dude, the Spider-Man movie. Have you heard about the Spider-Man movie? They're bringing back Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield, along with Tom Holland. Like it's going to be a, a multiverse. Oh, it's Spider Verse. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I did hear about that. Stoked for that. I want to see what that looks like. I don't know how I feel about it. If I'm going to be genuinely honest, I now that I have tasted better content, I don't know that I could go back to Toby Maguire. It's not so much about that. I don't know. It's it's more the nerdiness of it all coming together just yeah sam raimi warm and fuzzy inside but see the reason why i'm really excited to see this because i think it's marvel's take on a superhero horror movie i genuinely think it's going to try and come out as a horror movie yeah that would be interesting i'm not a huge horror fan so, but i'm a superhero movies. fan so we'll see i don't i don't think it's going to be as horror as horror fans expect and i don't think it's going to be as superhero -y as superhero fans expect so i'm thinking i'm expecting it to be a superhero thriller like a super like a more of a a psychological trip more than a horror movie yeah i i can see that happening yeah if i'm going to be 100% honest i expect something along the same veins of doctor strange meets doctor sleep who's doctor sleep uh, the Stephen King movie, the one after The Shining. 
Oh, I haven't seen any of those. Because, and, and the reason why I say that, before anybody yells at me for that, the reason why I say it is because Dr. Sleep, in my opinion, was a really good thriller. It was a really good psychological thriller. It wasn't necessarily horror, but it was just something where it just, it made me sit on the edge of my seat a yeah, lot. So was Dr. Sleep the good guy or the bad guy? Uh, he was the good guy. So the bad guy was Dr. Awake. <laughs> this, is the con- this is the content that I'm here for. <laughs> That's what I do. But so do you feel like Warner Brothers moving their movies onto a specific platform? Mm-hmm. Do you think that's a good move or do you think it's a bad move? I, hmm. It's a hard question. Uh, really, the question is, where is the money? And for a long time now, theaters have been kind of on the decline. And so I see this as... The future. The future. I mean, this is where things are going. So I'm. Uh, well, we'll have to wait and see how it actually turns out. But I wouldn't be surprised if this is like the first step of of how things change in the entertainment industry. I mean, I guess that's fair. The way I think of it is, it I think it's going to go more towards rather than it being geared towards specific streaming services. I think what's going to happen, and I might be absolutely wrong. I think that movie theaters are specifically going to go digital and they're going to get a lot of the content. It's going to be exactly just like a movie. Mm -hmm. You can't skip any of it. You can leave and go to the bathroom, but if you do, then you're out of luck. I think it's going to be that, but just digital. So just like you buy the ticket live premieres of digital. That's interesting. Uh, because there's definitely something about going to the theater it's there's an experience uh in in yeah absolutely uh yeah but they just don't make that much money the theaters don't the movies make fine money but (laughs) the theaters don't they they make their money off of concessions i think so snacks and everything that they sell there and they keep on trying to add these new things to to bring more people in you know they make comfier seats make 3d uh, surround sound. I think yeah, kind of the stuff, 40 you know? seats, like the one that they have in in Utah, where you move around in the seat. I've never done that, and I'm I'm really not interested in doing that. I don't want to bang my head around while I'm watching a movie. Thanks. <laughs> it's not bad, actually. I did it for one movie, and it was. I wouldn't pay for it again, but it wasn't terrible. Yeah, I'm not. I I don't need I don't need the fancy stuff. I've only ever seen like two 3D movies. <laughs> one of them was Nomeo and Juliet, uh, just random, and the other one was Gravity. Did you watch Gravity? I have. Uh, if I have seen Gravity, it's been long enough to where I don't remember it. Okay, it's it's got Sandra Bullock in it, and George I know, yeah, I know who's Clooney. in it. And <laughs> it's oh, it's in three D, dude. I, I almost threw up. It was. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a good movie, but there was a lot of spinning. And a lot of 3D and yeah. Yeah. You know. Okay. I will ask you two more questions and then we will end this episode because you and I are both very busy individuals and we have more things to do other than make content on the internet. I've been incredibly busy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. First question. Where, in your opinion, do you see YouTube declining or going up? I see it going up. Uh, yeah. I think there may be competitors and whatnot. Uh, TikTok is a thing, and I think a lot of the younger generation is uh, maybe going to grow up on that rather than the way that I grew up on YouTube. Mm-hmm. But I think YouTube has a really good hold on the online video industry, and I don't see them losing that uh, for the foreseeable future, at least. I I don't want to put all my eggs into one into basket. One basket. Yeah, as as far as I can see, YouTube is uh, huge, <laughs> majorly powerful. And so they sit on top of of online video production. I would say so. I mean, what else? What else is there? What Vimeo? Is Vimeo gonna <laughs> take down YouTube? Well, and it's because, and the main reason why I bring that up is because you know vine died out of nowhere, but then TikTok basically took its place. So basically, yeah. that's that's what I'm asking because there's a huge archive of 
videos on YouTube. So that that would be my main thing is like where would it all go? If oh, if, if YouTube died, died? Mm-hmm. I don't see YouTube just dying for. Uh, if if YouTube was going to die, I, it would it would be something that you would see coming, and it would be maybe copyright laws or the government coming in and messing things up. I don't know. If they... <laughs> I don't know. There's there's not a lot uh, that can really shake things up. Uh, things are always going to change, but I don't see. I just don't see YouTube dying anytime soon. And so with that, do you think, because honestly, they can't keep making, I don't, I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't, I don't see, I see the, the fount of ideas for movies drying up eventually. That's honestly what I see. You can't, it's going to get to a point where you're just remaking the same story in a different way. And, and, and I literally, I mean that literally think of Spider-Man, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. How many iterations of Spider-Man are there now? Three, this is the third that we're four i think now because we're on miles morales now right i i think it's going to get to a point where people are just going to start getting annoyed with the content that you're coming out with so i do you feel that short form entertainment like youtube is going to come to the forefront more than movies uh possibly i mean especially for the the maybe millennial generation z (laughs) age whatever Uh, comes out next yeah well i mean uh, I think a lot of I personally I don't have a TV. I YouTube is my entertainment. It's it's my main thing. It's it's where I go right. to watch. And so, uh, in in my mind, I, I do still watch movies and you know anime <laughs> TV shows time to time. Anime is the best. I love anime. Yeah, so it's not the best. I, me and my wife just binge watched Avatar: The Last Airbender. It was amazing. <laughs> Have you seen Korra too? That's on I love too. Korra. I really, really like Korra. Mm-hmm. Of, I think it gives a lot more detail on on the lore, and I like it. Yeah, I like the the lore building. Um, crap, what was I saying? I was talking about. You don't have a TV. Oh yeah, I don't have a TV. Uh, we'll we'll see where things go. I'm curious because the entertainment industry is all about money, and if people aren't interested, if people aren't watching, then you're not making money, and so they'll. Find a way to change. They'll shift, and I. You can already see it on YouTube. The late night shows putting clips mm-hmm. up and that type of thing. And I, I really don't know how to feel about that. But something will have to change with the entertainment industry, and we'll see what that looks like when it happens. I guess, or if we can get yeah. in front of it, we can make a lot of money. <laughs> it's Twitch streaming, man. That's all. It's just gonna be professional Twitch streamers everywhere. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, that's the the cool thing about social media, or YouTube, Twitch. You don't have to be uh, large and in charge to do it. You know, you just have a passion for something and you get to create and you'll find like-minded people and you just Hopefully. take it from there. Hopefully you find like-minded people. Well, it's, it's not going to be immediate. It's never... Usually never, I guess. Some people just hit a random jackpot, but that's really That's what you're going to be for me. You're going to be my random jackpot. I'm going to get 3,000 listeners on this one episode, and that's going to be it. Uh, I, I wouldn't depend on it. I don't know. It's, it takes time. <laughs> it takes time to build up. Even, you know, I'll, I'll make a video, and I'll be like, oh my gosh, this is such a great video. It's gonna, this, is, this is what's going to boost me up. This is what's going to do it. And I post it, and it gets 100 views, and... That's disappointing. And then I'll make another video. I'll make a video where I just kind of throw it together. I'm like, this is kind of funny. I'll I'll throw it up. And then it gets thousands of views. And so <laughs> that's that's hard to predict. But the, the main really thing is, is the main thing is that you have a passion for what you do and a, a desire to continue doing it, even if you don't have a huge audience following you even if people don't seem to care if you keep doing it you'll find people you, yeah. you will find the people that's what the youtube algorithm does even if you don't understand it the main purpose of it is to get you views and so it'll search until it finds people that will watch what you put out and then you just you take it from there so 
there is a, a bit of, of luck to it with how the algorithm works. You know, it, it may put your videos in front of the right people and you blow up or it, it doesn't show it or it can't find people who are interested. And so you just, you stay where you're at. Uh, the main thing is to be prepared for what happens. So if you do start to blow up, then you know what to do next. Uh, you, you have a clear path for yourself. Uh, where am I going with this? I, I, I just I, don't know. And, I just started well, saying inspirational speech stuff. I don't know. Well, no, because and and I guess along with that, my I guess my follow up question is: Do you think it would your advice to people who want to become YouTubers or want to become online creators? Would you would you say it's better to become niche and then branch out, or just immediately just make what you want and be a variety? Well, a lot of the time. A lot of the time, what you want to make will fall into some kind of niche. And if you can find out you know, what it is that you want to make and you can narrow down the people that you're trying to reach, then you'll, you'll be much more likely to find success than if you're just, I want to be famous on YouTube, so I'm going to make all these kinds of videos. This is what's popular right now so i'll do this so this is what's popular now so i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and do this that's that's when you're not going to uh, or you're less likely to be successful I, people still find success there sometimes but it's not as guaranteed as when you uh when you actually know what you're doing right and you know who i think or not who i think you know what platform i think has the best way of I guess splitting up and also merging communities is TikTok. Yeah. Oh, dude, TikTok is uh, crazy. You can go viral so fast. Well, I, not uh, even that, but it's 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 more the fact that you can find a community to fit in and get big on that community, and then by random chance, you get picked up by another community, and you and the world goes crazy. Yeah. Well, as far as I understand it, the TikTok algorithm works much differently from youtube where you put out a tiktok and it puts it in front of random people and if those people are interested in it if they interact with it then it's going to put it in front of more people and more people and more people and more people um, where if you if if they just kind of scroll past your video then they're not going to show it to people because they take it as uh, people not being interested so things can really blow up really quickly catch a lot of attention and then fade just as fast. So yeah. uh, YouTube is somewhat similar to that in a way, but on a much larger scale, <laughs> slower process. I think YouTube is the slow burn, but then I think TikTok is the just really fast, get viral really quickly, and then die off again. Yeah. Well, I think the real smart thing to do is to uh, get into all of it. <laughs> uh do it all. So, you know, you blow up on TikTok, you convert those over to YouTube subscribers. Uh, that's probably going to be a, a lot more of a set audience on YouTube than on, on TikTok. But yeah. you know, if you have a YouTube audience, you can get them over on TikTok or Instagram, Twitter, just anything you can do to interact with people and kind of gather a community together is uh, that's, that's what's going to do it. Yeah. Thank you for doing this again. Yeah, no problem. This is fun. This is a fun take two. <laughs> I love, and honestly, this is the problem that I have with talking to you is that I can't stop talking about interesting topics. I genuinely can't. That's because I'm such an interesting person, right? No, you just. Anyway, yeah. thanks for it. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I, I, it's so interesting because I, I remember the first time we talked for two hours and we didn't even realize it. Yeah. Hey, uh, you have the audio. I don't. I can't remember what we talked about, but it. Uh, I honestly, it's all just random crap. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah, I believe it. Is uh, hopefully one day that we'll see the light of day, but not anytime soon because it was bad. <laughs> it was really bad. It was. It was me who didn't know anything about podcasting, and you who just goes with the flow. <laughs> uh i was uh sorry i'm not more of a help <laughs> <laughs> no you were it's it's a i i have a lot of fun doing this especially with you mr dooley ray i appreciate that so if people want to find you where can they find you sir find me 
on YouTube, uh, also on Twitter, I guess. Uh, Dooley Ray is the name, and Speed is my game. I don't think so. That's what Sonic the Hedgehog says. It's that's not my catchphrase. I don't. You I don't should have play Sonic games. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of. <laughs> You should play Sonic games. That should you should play Contest of Champions and Sonic games. There's a lot of interesting Sonic games. I grew up on. Uh, well, actually, I had a GameCube with just a general collection of like the first seven or so. Shadow Sonic the games. Hedgehog, uh, Sonic Adventure Battle Three, Sonic Riders. <laughs> oh, God. oh, I spent way too much time on Sonic <laughs> Riders. God. I don't know why I thought it was so fun. I go back and play it now, and it's. It's not as fun as it used to be, but at the time it was it was super cool. I don't know what changed. Oh, everything changed. The world changed. <laughs> Nobody appreciates Sonic. Nobody. Anymore. Well, it's because they they kind of did it to themselves with their whole production quality. You know, they would release games that were just buggy as crap. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Sonic Adventure Battle Three, in my opinion, is the best Sonic game. I I can't remember what I've played. Sonic Heroes. I liked that one. So Adventure Battle 3 was the one where you could raise your own chow in the game, in GameCube. Okay. Yeah, I never played that one. So. Oh, it's so good. I highly recommend it. I'll have to try it out then. Yeah. Anyway, for everyone listening, thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. And just remember to get some sunlight and some water because you are a complicated houseplant just with emotions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a plant, I'm a tree. I'm there you banana, go. I'm a banana tree. Is that a thing? It's banana. Follow your dreams. Follow your follow your dreams and be a banana tree. That's that's the message for this episode. Bananas Brought to you by Dooley Ray. On trees. The bananas grow on trees. <laughs> I'm gonna end it now. <laughs> <laughs> Hello again, everyone. Thank you so much for listening to this episode and sticking through with it to the end. Uh if you liked it. Give us a like, give us a review, send us an email at tctpodcast at gmail.com. Look for us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, yeah, we, we're we still planning some really cool stuff. I've got some series planned, so keep an eye out for those. They should be coming out hopefully at the beginning of March. So if you're interested in those, keep an eye out because I've got some announcements coming out soon. And remember, get some water and get some sunlight because you're basically a houseplant with complicated emotions.